Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we bring you a couple of Michigan Magazine classics from our video archives. First to the Howell area and the home studio of an extraordinary woodcarver who not only creates beautiful solid wood furniture, but also is a master at carving carousel horses, John T. Nicholas. Then back by popular demand, we bring you Lorraine of the former Chuck Soul Food Restaurant near Pontiac. Lorraine's cooking up something that got our viewers glued to the TV set last time. It's her fabulous banana pudding. Stay tuned because after that, we've got another phrase of the day, giving you a chance to win a vacation getaway from Michigan Magazine. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Bile for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Bile. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. On this edition of Michigan Magazine, on the road again in the Howell area, and this is a subject I really enjoy, with John T. Nicholas. John, thank you very much for allowing us Hi. into your beautiful workshop. John specializes in carving wood, carousel horses, rocking horses, and you've been doing this for how long, John? I started back in 75. What got I, you interested in this? Uh, well, I started, started on decoys. That really started interest, interesting me, and I started carving those, and Horses just seemed to come natural after everybody, too many people were carving decoys. So uh -huh. Nobody was carving horses, so I carved them. It gives you a little creative license with the uh, carousel horses, too. I mean, it they don't it have does. To be exact. Yeah, there's so much, so much information in pictures on carousels. You can mix and match and uh, take uh, one item off one horse, put it on your horse, and take it off another one and do all sorts of things with uh -huh. it. I bet you get a lot yeah. of input from people who are into this, too, or do you just kind of take your own time? I, I kind of take my own time and decide what I want uh -huh. to do and how I'm going to do it and everything. Some of the carousel horses will take as much as 300 hours to carve. Uh, and even some of your smaller pieces, like the small cats and, and rabbits that I do, um, they're, they're eight hours worth of carving right there. So it does take a lot of time to do it, and, but it's fun. Sometimes you don't realize the hours go by too fast. Uh huh. What are you working on here? This is a, a goat that uh, we were up in the Shelburne Museum up in Vermont. And we had seen this, and we took pictures of it while we were up there. And my daughter's a graphic artist, and she did the blueprints for me, did the drawings, and then I turned it into wood. You didn't start out doing this. I mean, when you were about 35, you decided to take a change in life, more yeah. or less, right? <laughs> Tell us mid a little Midlife crisis. Midlife crisis, they <laughs> say, I guess. I was a clinical laboratory manager prior to all this, uh -huh. and uh, I was running back and forth to Detroit, and the hours I was spending were mostly evening hours. and. I wasn't seeing my kids very often, so uh, I just decided that, hey, my kids are more important, so I started staying home and doing this, so, uh -huh. and it's been been good. We have, we've had good years, we've had bad years, oh, but sure. it, it all works out. But now you're doing something that you like to do, and yeah. it's showing mm -hmm. in your work here, but you didn't actually start with these horses, or, so what, you tell me, furniture was it, or? Well, fur I started furniture because all we could get commercially was particle board with mm. veneers on it and things like that. So we started doing early American style furniture, uh, painted furniture in particular. We antiqued it and things like that. And now we're doing a lot of, uh, we were doing a lot of reproduction work and things like that. And then horses were kind of like the icing on the cake. Uh, the other stuff, the furniture and pieces were the bread and butter and the horses were the, so the icing. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but uh, we sold quite a few horses over the years and um, I can't complain we have one style that we've done over a hundred of we have another style a primitive rocking horse that shoot I think I stopped counting somewhere around 300 but mm -hmm. uh, and then of course the big rocking horses uh, I usually sell I've sold about 10 or 12 of those so far over the years since I started carving them. John's love of woodworking and carousel horses is evident throughout his two-story workshop. Upstairs you'll find all his hand carving tools, all kept as sharp as possible. John telling us that a sharp tool can make all the difference in creating a project as compared to struggling with a concept. Downstairs you'll find other essential woodworking tools, including a homemade lathe with a commercial duplicating attachment, an essential tool to help create and complete those bread and butter projects John's mentioned. It's not as fancy as a commercial lathe, but it, it works. And what we're going to do is I'm doing spindles for a, a house down in Florida, the same house that I've, I've worked on two years ago and we helped restore it down in Fort Myers. And these are the uh, porch railings uh, for the spindles. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, we'll set this up on this uh, area right here and then get our centers and everything on these blanks. And then once the uh, thing is all set up, this is the, uh, the blade that uh, does the duplicating. John's first love, though, is, of course, the carousel and rocking horses. From learning the secrets of a master carver to passing on his expertise in weekly classes, he teaches hopeful wood carvers. Here, John has created what he calls blanks for his carving students. Even those are a work of art. Most of them are made from old barn beams. Uh, this is from an old barn beam. This is basswood here. Legs are maple, and this is dug, dug fur, again, from an old barn beam. So they're basically a hundred year old horses. Yeah, they they, just, don't, in them, they just don't know it yet. They don't know it yet. So. Look at that. <laughs> well that's all this is basswood here and then from an old barn beam, so you can see the nail holes right here. Oh, yeah. And now eventually once you carve them you can fill them. If you want to leave them there, fine. If you want an antique looking horse, just leave them in leave them in there. If you want a smooth horse, fill them up with wood fill and mm -hmm. go from there. Even though John made that dramatic career change in his mid-30s, it wasn't like he blindly decided to try something he was totally unaware of. John's mother was an extremely gifted artist and craftsperson, and definitely planted that seed of inspiration in a young John Nicholas. Inside John's home, example of his mother's talents grace the walls. Here John points out a, a work of his mother's, an intricate piece made of fine thread in a type of needlepoint known as Chinese bunka. John's mother was also an accomplished painter and photographer. A walk through John's home will provide a feast of high-quality handcrafted items that showcases a versatile artist. This is uh, the dining room area. You've got some uh, craft work here, too, I see that you've done. This is a table made out of sugar pine from one pint, 22 inches wide. Wow. And we just cut it end to end and then seamed it in the middle and put breadboard at the ends. And it's a... Uh, it's a big table. It's, I think it's 83 some odd inches long, 42 inches wide. Um, and then the pie safe here, this is done out of black walnut. And the original one, we have the original antique upstairs. I use it to put my clothes in. This is used now as a china cupboard, so to speak. And then this is a horse that, I, uh, another one of our antique type horses that I've carved over the years. All right, John, this is uh, the glider that you use. This is the glider that we do, put, our, put all our bigger rocking horses on. Uh-huh. Goes back and forth. And like I say, I test drive each one. So you actually get on there? Sure do. Okay. You can even try no, it. I bet. <laughs> no, not today, not today. It's basically called a safety rocker. And it was, I thought it was originated in uh, England. Uh -huh. But it actually was um, invented and patented here in the United States. No kidding. Safety glider. Now this is that uh, rocking horse that we saw the antique of. This is the antique uh, replica. Or the yeah, replica this is the replica antique. of the antique. And it's got the horsehair tail, horsehair mane, and it's, it's built exactly the same way as the uh, as the original one. Mm -hmm. Got the leather leather ears. The uh, ears on these weren't carved. Uh -huh. Versus their your carousel type right. horse. These and are, you've because got ears would always break break first. So a lot of manufacturers switch to leather to ears. Leather. And your stirrups there. Yeah, and there's the uh, cast crafted. stirrups. Cast stirrups. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's probably one of our. That's about the biggest one okay as far as the rockers go now here's the here's the one that we saw the blanks in that you know we're getting ready for the uh, right the uh, carving class and that has wooden ears mm -hmm. and then this is that sisal rope you just drill holes and give it a, a crew cut 
mm -hmm. and that's the tail on it. Tail. And sheepskin is used on for the uh, blanket. My gosh, okay. We and then we have our little primitive rocking horse right there. That's done from a cedar log, from a for cedar fence post. Really? Now this was basically originally taken from, a, from an antique also. And this is basically, we figured this is more for decoration. But if the size of the fanny fits it, then yeah. you know they can ride it. <laughs> they can ride it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is another one of your gliders? And this is another one of the gliders. The original horse of this one had a real ugly face to it. And I've since you know carved the face on it so it looks a whole lot better. Mm, and I it's like on, a, on a glider. Mm, nice. Again, this is very typical of what came out of the Sears and Roebuck catalogs and things like that back in the uh, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Do you get a lot of your inspiration from photographs? or? Yeah, photographs. Uh, basically, the original horse came to me at one time or another and I repaired it. And while I had it, I just went ahead and made a, a, a replica of it. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of my daughter's artwork. Oh, yeah. She had some, she has a lot to do with some yeah, of your she, she graduated from Kendall College of Art and Design and uh, she's quite the artist. John told us the love of art does not always provide monetarily unless you create something that is both artistically and commercially acceptable. Like this replica of an old-fashioned wagon John created, it was featured in the nationally known mail order catalog, The Country Sampler. And for a while, John thought he was in the wagon making business. The response was overwhelming. John went on to say that some of his work will again be appearing in the latest editions of Country Sampler. John's first love, though, as we've mentioned before, is his carousel and rocking horse carvings. A highlight of this love came when he was asked by the White House to design a Christmas ornament, which he did in the form of a miniature rocking horse. John and his wife made a special trip to the White House to see if they could spot his ornaments on the tree at the White House, which they couldn't but were overjoyed at what they did find. John explains. Went in there looking for it on the tree, mm -hmm. and uh, we couldn't find it. The guards let us in behind the ropes to wander around the tree looking for it, because there were a tremendous amount of ornaments on the tree. And when we didn't see it there, he said, well, maybe it's on the other 22 trees in the uh, White House. So we went from the blue room into the red room, and then we, as we walked into the state dining hall, we saw it sitting right there on a big old table with just my carving, a centerpiece, and a carving of a of a cat angel on the other end. So it was kind of neat just to wow. see see your ornament almost showcase. Yeah. Right? Well, John, I appreciate you taking time to share with us your world of carousel horses, rocking horses, and woodwork here in the Howell area. And we hope to see a lot of the rockabillies turning up, hopefully, yep. in the area. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. And maybe next time we're down here, we'll see that carousel uh, under construction, at least. Yep. Maybe if not, on, just on paper, eh? Yeah, I'd like to have one in my backyard. There just you let go. all the kids in the neighborhood ride it. Maybe we can get something going like that. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> Appreciate Thank you. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Planning your special day? Canyons Resort on beautiful Sage Lake can make it happen. Enjoy a beachfront wedding. Everything in one location. Food, beverage, lodging, and entertainment. Canyons handles everything from floral arrangements to the wedding cake. Call now to reserve your special day at Canyons. Flu season, be prepared. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are of course welcome. Call now for more information. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. On a recent edition of Michigan Magazine, we enjoyed the delicious food and hospitality of Chuck and Lorraine Lozano at Chuck's Soul Food Restaurant near the Pontiac Silverdome. And all this is made from scratch. This it don't made, come out of no box. This is made from scratch. You take care of the desserts, Lorraine. Uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, Ma must have... You, was that Ma's uh, apron strings when you were small? And Actually, it was my aunt that I'm named after. My first name is Ethel, and I was named after my aunt Ethel. Uh -huh. And she was a great cook. And uh -huh. she always made a lot of desserts, and I kind of took after her. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is very sweet because it is a caramel icing. Oh, boy. And the icing is made from scratch also with uh, butter and brown sugar. That's one thing you'll find in everything that is prepared at Chuck's, all homemade from scratch. As you'll see here, as Lorraine prepares her famous banana pudding, 
She begins by placing vanilla wafers evenly on the bottom of her baking dish, then places sliced ripe bananas on another layer. When I peel the bananas, I remove the strings from them. Sometimes they'll have little brown spots, but that's okay. You can cut them out. You want to make sure that the bananas are ripe, not green. It's a better flavor when they're a little more ripe. This I made prior. It consists of two cups of sugar, a cup of flour, and probably half a cup or half a teaspoon rather of salt. And I combine those ingredients, mix them up real good. Then I add um, eight egg yolks to two cups of evaporated milk plus two cups of water. And then I put this in a double boiler and let it cook until it thickens. Probably takes about an hour and a half to two hours because I am using a double boiler. If you have the time to watch it closely, you can put it in a regular pot, but you have to stir a regular because it'll burn if you don't. But because I'm usually doing other things, I can walk away from this very easily and it not burn. So then what I do is I spoon half of the custard filling over this after I put in a layer of vanilla wafers and about two to three bananas sliced and then the custard. Looks to me like you've made a few of these up before already. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Then I put another layer of vanilla wafers and slice the remaining bananas. Some people like a lot of bananas, but I don't like a lot. I just like the flavor of the banana. This also, by the way, has some vanilla in it. I would say about two teaspoons. Uh -huh. A lot of times I don't measure, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to tell, to tell somebody else how to cook but I forgot about the vanilla. The vanilla goes in after the custard has cooked. Uh -huh. Okay, after you have put all the pudding on there, then you beat the white from nine uh, eggs. And after you beat it quite a bit, you add about two tablespoons of sugar and about a tablespoon of vanilla and beat it until it's light and fluffy. Then you spread it over the banana pudding. Make little peaks to make it look pretty. Pretty is one thing, but I'll bet you that is absolutely oh, yummy. It tastes great. <laughs> and then we put this in the oven for about five to seven minutes or until it's golden brown, put the oven on 400 to brown it. Oh, great. Take it from us, the finished pudding was delicious. Rich and oh, I'll tell you, it was excellent. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Oscona County's Timberland Quill Trail. Tour our Quill Trail next time you're in northeastern lower Michigan. Cedar Valley Golf Club on Weaver Road, Cummins, Michigan. The beautiful woodworker shop located directly across the street from the Skyline Event Center. 
Detweiler Chalets of Fairview open all year. New recreational trails on man-made lakes. Cummins Market in downtown Cummins. The best little store in town. The Kirtland Insurance Agency, your independent agent in Lewiston and Mayo. Fairview Food Market, famous for their fresh and homed smoked meats, located on the corner in Fairview. Historic Mod Eaters of Luzerne, your hosts Mo and Bird Smith, invite you to enjoy good food, drink, and company. Thanks for joining us in this edition of Michigan Magazine. Here's the phrase of the day. Let's canoe the mighty Asaba River. Send it to us now at iWatchMichiganMagazine at gmail.com or on a card or in a letter to Michigan Magazine, Box 424, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. And stay tuned. You could be the next winner of a Michigan vacation getaway. Have a great week. We'll see you here next week on the next edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is. Along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Family bookshelf on the corner of M33 and M72 in Fairview. Featuring unique books and gifts from around the world. Tim Lizzie's 50s and 60s Diner of Mayo, a Michigan dining destination. Cops and Donuts and the Traffic Stop Diner, open seven days a week and 24-7 during the summer. Amish Country Natural Products of Mayo. Featuring area arts, crafts, food, and all natural products. Luzerne Hardware, downtown Luzerne. More than just a hardware. Hitchman Acres, cabins, and canoes of Mayo. The Mayo Mud Bogs, July 5th and August the 30th. 